it's just there it just feels uh very much like we, we could be entering some dark ages Welcome back to the CK Breezy channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff that I've been seeing in Smash. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little worried. Uh, I'm a little worried about the future of Smash. I don't, I don't think it's going to explode or implode or anything like that. But I do think that we are heading to some level of a uh, like Smash depression from where we have been uh, kind of constantly kind of going up. Now, I mean, if you look at Summit, you probably wouldn't believe that because the money is going up on Summit. But that's just, that's Summit. I mean, the money always goes up on Summit. The whales come out, want to get their favorite players in, all that other good stuff. But the first thing I wanted to talk about today was the fact that, like, a lot of players are getting dropped uh, lately. Um, would, or, or leaving their orgs lately. And that's, like, that actually might be just, like, an esports thing in general. I think esports right now is kind of, the esports bubble is looking a little rough. I actually talked to some of the Brawlhalla guys, and there's been some, you know, there's been some esports bubble talk as well. But... Got this little tidbit from EE e. here. That's my guy. Who said, uh, this won't be the only one. Let's see what he had to say. This is not the only big drop I've heard is coming. Now, you can place your bets on whom else you think might be getting dropped. I'm always eager to know what you guys are thinking. But I have heard this is only the start of a couple other big drops that could come. And they probably think to yourself, well, Leo, I mean, that's top of the line who could be next i mean well, that was a weird place to end that but yeah uh so if you guys didn't know yeah leo is uh not with his org anymore t1 he's been with them forever which is an interesting drop by the way because leo again is easily the best player in the world and has been for a long time uh and uh it's just wild to see that the best player like either not renew his count contract or he's probably going me he could be going to a better team but t1 is a, actually a, obviously a, a great esports uh, org uh, so it's not like he was jumping off a tier two or tier three org to jump into a tier one one. He was already on a tier one one. Uh, Cosmos also uh, doing the same thing. He he he's not with Beast Coast anymore. Uh, that was a little little while back, but you know, still another uh, player that has results. And uh, you know, so those two drops like just like that, like right around the the beginning of the Smash season, is kind of insane. This year is starting off much slower than last year as far as uh tournaments go um we've had you know we've had genesis uh we're gonna have summit we got collision um and there's probably like one more somewhere in there but yeah it's just it just oh and level up expo which was actually bigger this year than it was uh last year but that was that's a convention so even without smash it was still run it's just it's interesting like to see how things are like kind of shaping out here for smash right now because it just it, it feels like the end of last year is now starting to have its ripple effects of this year with both tours being canceled, Panda being gone, you know, as much as whatever you want to say about Panda and Allen and Shore. Yeah, they brought a decent amount of money and like opportunity into the scene. So all that money and opportunity is gone. Uh, Smash World Tour being gone means that VG is kind of like hanging in the balance. We don't know what's I don't I still don't know what's going on with them. Uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it there's like a cloud right now in my head. Or in my opinion, over, um, over Smash, over the Smash community, and rates have been going down. As for like for a personal experience, rates have been going down. Like there's a certain rate that I used that I've gotten for quite some time throughout my uh, last two years of commentary, and now people are talking about they can't meet that meet that rate because uh, sponsors are pulling out, uh, and that's hurting everybody. That's not hurting just you know commentators. It's hurting uh, the prize pool. That's hurting the the tournament uh, organizers. It's hurting everybody. Um, Smash, I, well, to me, I think Smash has always been kind of unprofitable. But when you think about, like, Smash in, in comparison to, like, any PC game, they can sell so much more. Uh, you know, like, oh, this player's playing so well because he's got the new HyperX, you know, this, what is this, Pulse Fire Haste. Like, his aim is insane. Oh, like, he can hit buttons faster because he has the new HyperX whatever keyboard, you know what I mean? Headsets. Uh, anything to go into your computer. There's all that you can sell. With with Smash, you can sell potentially headsets and different controllers, and like that's that's that's, that's almost like the brunt of it. <laughs> that's, almost, <laughs> that's almost like it. Um, it's it's a great spectator experience, and going to tournaments is very fun. But outside of that, I feel like sometimes it's kind of hard to market. Um, and I've been thinking this forever, but I think you know esports orgs are now starting to catch up. I think there was probably some level of good marketing being shown when 
Panda and whatever they were doing was working. But after two different tours being canceled, I feel like as an esports org, I'd probably be a little skeptical about um, about jumping into Smash myself too. The third thing, but this is like a, a smaller thing. Uh, this is just like from my own personal experience, bro. Smash Twitter is exhausting. Like just it's it, Smash Twitter, like Smash Smash Internet is exhausting. And I feel like right now, after uh, you know the 2020 um, stuff happened, uh, you know everybody was. I mean, people are definitely doing a better job of being on the straight and narrow. I think uh, I've seen more consciousness when it comes to like at at online at actual tournaments. I've seen more consciousness uh, about who people hang out with and like you know underage drinking and all that. And like that's great. Like that's wonderful. But if you leave it to the online Smash community. Um, those people are exhausting. It feels like everybody on Smash, on Twitter right now just wants a dunk. Like, they want to be able to, like, hi, look at this guy. He's shitty. And I pointed it out. Like, that's what, that's, I, it's me. Like, everyone look at me. I'm better than him because I was able to point out that this guy is ass. And it's just, it's so exhausting. I've stopped chiming in on anything and everything because it's just, like, everyone acts like everybody in the community is still, like, 16. Like, if you go to an actual tournament, um, will there be 16 year olds there? For sure, right? Will there be young kids there? Yeah, 100%. But the vast majority of the people there are either 18 or of drinking age now. Like, I, we're not gonna act like the, the community is like half and half where it's like 80% children and then 20% adults. Cause like, that's just not true. Uh, there's a lot of adults, you know what I mean? Like that's how things get ran. That's how, uh, you know, you have players who were under the legal age of drinking who are now over the legal age of drinking because they've been in the game so long. So it's just, I don't know. It, it gets annoying seeing that every time like something happens, like, oh, think of the children, protect the children. I do think that like, yes, you do need to protect the children, but like, I'm not gonna not go do adult things and talk about adult things on my Twitter and stuff because you know, a couple 16 year olds follow me. Like, that shit is weird. That shit, I, I, think, I think it's weird to like try to have to cater my whole life to 5% of people who are underage who probably shouldn't be on the internet in the first place. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. You know, like, I don't want to be able, I don't want to go out to, like, karaoke at night or whatever and come back, you know, I might be a little, I might be a little drunk. You know, I'm, and, and then, and then everyone's like, yo, I saw TK Breezy drunk in the lobby. I can't believe he would be drunk around these kids. What? <laughs> it's a Twitter thing, and I'm sure it's a Twitter thing, like, everywhere, but because, like, I'm talking specifically about the Smash community, and I've been seeing it a lot lately, everybody just wants to get their dunks in. To be like i'm a better person and i know these people probably have uh skeletons in their closet and stuff but that's the thing about being on twitter is anonymity is a fucking disease one and two when you are someone you're under the microscope all the time right and the minute that like you uh you know one thing is said about you uh and you either uh deny it people try to dig deeper if you ignore it people say that you you know because you're not talking it's probably true and then if you clap back at said person uh now you're being a bully so <laughs> there's no winning bro <laughs> there's simply simply no winning but like that's where most of us have gathered to find out more information that's where most of the people find out a lot of stuff i found out about tournaments there i found out about place uh placements there uh about like newer players newer commentators i found out about a lot of stuff it's just like you have to wait through so much bullshit to find that stuff at times it's just it bro why there's no way players have a shot. Oh, thoughts on Summit vote, voting? I uh, look. I, it's a, it's like a necessary evil. Uh, because we tried that other way, right? We tried that other way, and it just destroyed the pot. So I'd rather have a fat pot, and and the whales coming out and throwing some money than to have a small pot and people fighting for what looks, what feels like a regular tournament entry. You know. Uh, speaking of children in the scene, what are your thoughts on Sailor Magatron's Midwest Summit? Uh, look, that's my friend, but that was dumb. Like, that was dumb. You know what I mean? And like, but the thing is though, that is that once she was uh, originally told, yeah, like, hey, bro, that's probably not a good look. She was like, oh, you're right. Let me, uh, let me not do that because yeah, there's children around, whatever. I just think that that was like a that was a weird, that was a weird that was a weird way to go about it. But I think that because she she remedied remedied that quickly, that it shouldn't have been the thing that it is. I, what I did find weird, the tweet from I think Miss Joy-Cons who was like, "Oh yeah, I've been monitoring this account, 
ever since. Dude, what? What? Are you, who are you? Like the, the fucking Twitter police? That's weird as shit. Like. <laughs> You've been monitoring this account? Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm just waiting until this motherfucker fucks up. So that way, so that way, I can be the first to say, look at this. Look at this right here. Oh, yeah, like, we gotta we gotta talk that shit. Oh, yeah, everyone point and, and tell her she's a bad person. Yeah, it's, 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 it should not have, it should not have blown up to what it was. You know, they should not blown to what? She, she, she did the thing. Someone was like, hey, that's kind of weird. She was like, you know what? That is weird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, shut it down and she shut it down and then everybody had everything that they said everything every, everybody had something to say about it for like the next few days right because that's just twitter that's twitter that's the twitter uh, rumor mill ah here we go i found it okay yeah i've been keeping an eye on her page ever since i followed her and she was doing a very good job of keeping her only fans separate from smash so i figured a day like this would never happen but i guess i was wrong and yes you're right this is very unsettling is, is that not weird? <laughs> is that not weird? To just put that out there like that? Nah, man, that's weird. That's weird. I, you know, I understand. Look, that's the, the that's the, that's the virtue signal I be talking about, though. Like, you, you, you gotta, now we're, now we're, any girl who has the OnlyFans, like, I have to be there. Just in case she, she slips up. Okay. <laughs> Summit voting uh, is more of a popularity contest rather than, hey, this kid's been busting his ass. Let's give him a, a shot. Well, yeah. I mean, it's also who you know. If you can get someone to whale for you, you're going in. I mean, that's, but there's no problem with that uh, because the thing is, like, not everybody is voted in. You know, if you've been busting your ass, win, win, win the thing that you need to win to get, uh, to get brought in. You know what I mean? So the voting part is just like let's fill out the rest of this roster for sure, and I and, and I think you know there could be some way where we could make it a little easier uh, for voting to like work uh, the way where it, like whales don't have that much of an influence. But I look as I said, I'd rather have a fat ass prize pool than than uh, worry about you know oh man we this guy didn't get in because he didn't know enough people. I'd rather have a fat ass prize pool, man. I think I think winning summon is is, is a prestige that a lot of people will never get a chance to say they can do. And if you win it, you should be rewarded accordingly. Did you see that Optic tweeted at Leo after he announced that he was a free agent? Optic getting a smash would be crazy. Well, we already got FaZe. Speaking of, man, I got, look, I understand it. Like, you know, popularity contests, whatever, Hbox, you know, whatever. I'm still gonna give it, I'm a, Hbox is doing more for the community on a regular basis than I think a lot of people who are probably trying to always shit on them. But not even I think. Uh, that I know a lot of people who are always trying to shit on him um, are doing. Yeah, I just, I mean, he does it like, he's bringing in a, a weekly that's that's pretty good money uh, every week. Uh, and, you know, I understand that, yeah, HBox sometimes can be a little head-ass, but I think, I think for a lot of the people who try to shit on him or whatever, like, I feel like he's always under scrutiny, even though, like, I think when it comes to players alone, he's probably doing uh, the most amount of work as far as providing opportunity for people now you know yeah well that's i think that's just esports in a nutshell but especially at smash esports smash smash esports in general like i feel like we're they're probably bleeding money way harder than anybody else but i mean if you want to if you want to see this thing like work yeah you're gonna we're gonna need those people like that we're gonna need those people like that because it's just you know, like before, it, it, I feel like if everybody pulled out, we're we're going back to like Genesis three, Genesis two times. You know what I mean? Did you see the uh, everyone of the esports company, uh, the guard? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that recently too. Uh, I was like, damn, that's actually crazy. But like again, like as I said, a lot of things. This is also kind of why I'm afraid to like go and try to get this esports job now, because it seems like the minute I'm about to get it, I'm gonna lose it like the next day. You know, like nothing feels stable. You know, people are like, oh, happy to announce that I now work for Genji Esports or something. And then Genji Esports a month later is like, yeah, man, actually, we're just going to go ahead and close this shit down. And now I'm just out of a job again. <laughs> uh, Yummy know I mean? ads all have and will always be what you need to make it work if you want to uh, get bigger, unless you want pay per view. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, I mean, I never complain about ads, and I don't know why, like, uh, it, what's weird is, like, when people complain about ads, but it's, like, over, like, an ad break, I get so annoyed. 
Like when it's like a be right back screen, and they're like, Ugh. five ads. I'm like, bro, what do you, what did what did you want to look at? It's a be right back screen, bro. <laughs> Nothing is going on. <laughs> like if we take just esports away, we talk about because I feel like you could probably get a decent amount of return on interest uh, for like league. Let's sell let's sell team skins, right? They can do that. Bam, that's getting money back. Uh, we're going to have the fattest fucking finals of all time. Like, bam, that's going to be crazy. Smash, we can't do that. There's no selling skins. There's no selling anything but the game and DLC, which is not going to, uh, <laughs> which is not going to um, uh, go to us. That's just going to Nintendo, which you guys hate. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's rough out here. You know? I don't know, man. Esports right now, just it just feels, it feels fragile. And the Smash community in itself feels very fragile and i feel like we're just like one like more uh, i don't know like i don't even know how we bounce back from this panda this panda smash world tour thing to be completely honest like i don't even think we did i think we're just slowly trickling down like it's like we're slowly bleeding out off, off of that um and we're still trying to figure out like what's the next step because yeah man i mean that's just like i vg hanging in the balance is kind of weird uh, us not really knowing how this how Nintendo works with these licenses and uh, and whatnot, it, that's also kind of interesting. It's just there. It just feels uh, very much like we, we could be entering some dark ages. I don't think you can ever kill the Smash community because, that, as Mango said at some point in time, like you know, they'll play they'll play in the back of a Seven Eleven. You know what I mean? And that's true. But you might kill the greater esports scene for Smash uh, with the way that things are going right now you know i don't know i'm probably gonna go ahead and close uh this part of the talk uh now so i can go ahead and cut the video but yeah man let me know what you think in, in the comments below uh we, we're not really sure i'm not really sure what, what happens next uh, i'm not really sure what happens next for me i've been kind of like stressed out lately because i'm just like dude like but like this is what i do i stream and i commentate you know damn bro the future is definitely fucking uh not certain i mean it's never certain but it feels even more cloudier than 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 before we're gonna have to figure out what the fuck's uh going on uh sooner than later but yeah thanks for watching man leave, leave a comment below make sure you come over to the tk breezy stream at twitch.tv slash tk breezy if you want to hang out in person and catch some of these live talks and live anything else as we be doing um yeah thanks for watching peace